If I'm talking to you about cars and I mention Mini in the conversation, three small peppy little hatchbacks scouring the streets of downtown LA would be the first thing that comes to your mind. But since the last few years, the market has been a changing place where these little cars are sidelined and the real cash crop was the crossover. So in order to get a piece of pie from the market, Mini had to come up with this. This is the Mini Countryman and when it came out, most of the Mini purists were enraged with this model. But over time, they've become accustomed to it and now it is the second most popular Mini sold worldwide. So let me tell you all about this new 2021 model. In my opinion, what Mini have done is that they've taken the Cooper platform, they've injected tons and tons of steroids into it and basically they've come out with the Countryman and that's exactly how the Countryman drives. It drives like a jacked up Cooper on steroids. Instantly you can feel that the suspension is not the most compliant suspension in the segment. It's definitely on the stiffer side and that's a good thing because in the corners this thing handles just like a Cooper. When it comes to the engine and the engine response, eh, I take it or leave it. I mean, it's not as responsive as a Cooper and that's totally fine because this is supposed to be the more sensible and more uh, family driven car in the lineup. Although you have the choice of using the paddles. So if you really want to drive it in a spirited manner, you can totally do that with the uh, paddles on the steering wheel. Uh, it has three driving modes, it has green, it has mid and it has sport, green being the most efficient one and honestly the efficiency of this car is not that great because we've driven from Pune all the way to Lonavla, uh, we've driven on cruise control in green mode, uh, we did not go above 100 km an hour which is the speed limit and still with all of these factors, the car is only giving us 9.4 km a litre for some reason which is kind of weird because any other car in this segment I think would have given much much more fuel economy regardless of it if it was petrol or diesel so that is a bit concerning in my opinion Mini Coopers and Mini Countrymen both have a tendency to drink quite a lot of fuel uh, all of the Minis that we've got in the past have drank tons and tons of fuel for no reason whatsoever so I'm guessing this will be no different The Countryman is not actually based on the Cooper platform, but rather it is based on the BMW X1 platform. So that goes to show how well Mini has calibrated the Countryman to feel like a Mini product, because it doesn't feel anything like an X1. The engine is shared with many cars in the BMW Mini Alliance like the 1 Series, 2 Series, X1, Cooper, 3 Series, etc, etc. The 2.0-litre turbo 4 produces 190 horsepower and 280 Nm of torque, which is alright, nothing too impressive. The gearbox is a 7-speed DCT unit, but is definitely not as snappy or as responsive as it is in the Cooper. The Countryman is a very sporty yet practical alternative to most of the crossover offerings in this price range. We know we would definitely choose this Countryman over the X1 because of its tighter handling and more interesting exhaust mode. Hop outside and you start looking at the design, you'll instantly see and like I said before, it looks like a Mini Cooper injected with steroids. At the front, the headlights are different compared to the normal Cooper and the bumper is completely different. And since this is an SUV or a crossover or whatever you want to call it, it has lots of body cladding all around and at the top it has roof rails. But I'm pretty sure those roof rails are not functional because this thing has the panoramic sunroof. So yeah, I don't think you can put anything on top of this car. And since this is the S variant, the top end variant of the Countryman, it has lots of S badges all around the car. 
From the side profile, it looks pretty much like a Mini Cooper. Uh, it looks like a stretched out platform, which it probably is. And hopping onto the back end, it has this nice little glass over here at the back and this gloss black over here, which makes it look like the glass is wrapping around to the back end of the car. At the back, it looks pretty similar to any Mini Cooper that's on sale today. It has the iconic uh, Union Jack tail lights and it has two exhaust pipes which are real and a fake diffuser I would say but yeah I would not be complaining because it looks pretty nice it gets these really nice looking 18 inch JCW wheels but don't let the body cladding and muscular stance of the car fool you in no way this countryman is remotely even close to an SUV Yes, it does have a decent amount of ground clearance, but this clip shows the maximum amount of off-roading, if you can call it that, the Countryman can do. The Countryman is only sold in India with two trims, the Cooper S and the Cooper S JCW inspired. This being option number two, thus having the fancy JCW bits all around. On the interior, the Countryman is way more mature than the Mini Cooper. Off the bat, you don't get that tacky looking trim and that Union Jack over there. No offense to any Brits or any Union Jack supporters or anything like that. Uh, this is just a subjective thing. I do not like that trim piece. Instead, in the Countryman, you get a pretty simple looking dashboard and this aluminium brushed silvery trim all around the car which looks very very nice uh, this particular spec that the countryman has come in is absolutely stunning you get the tan seats with the white piping on the seats as well the seats themselves are very comfortable and they hold you in place when you're going around corners you get the Harman Kardon sound system in this as well and you get this uh, infotainment system which is shared across all Mini Cooper variants in its lineup so it has Apple CarPlay but no Android Auto I don't know why Mini Cooper does this whereas in BMW the latest infotainment system has Android Auto as well so Mini Cooper why are you beefing against Android users I don't know why uh, you get the JCW steering wheel in this car which is I'm guessing an optional extra so this is a very nice steering wheel red stitching paddle shifters very sporty touch some things that I don't like first of all this vanity mirror over here uh, I am sitting straight in the car right now but the vanity mirror is kind of crooked and it does not directly come onto your face so you have to get to the angle of it and then do your hair or your lipstick or whatever you want to do the second thing I don't like is this instrument cluster in front of me in the pictures it looks very very nice and very futuristic but in real life yeah it falls short quite a bit so first of all it has this matte uh, finish on top of it which is pretty good because uh, there's no sort of glare when you're driving it but mini has done quite a lot of cost cutting if you look properly onto the instrument cluster it is not a complete digital instrument cluster at all the tachometer in fact is an analog tack but the finishing on top of the tack makes it look like it's a digital one whereas it's not the same is with the fuel meter and the middle part of the instrument cluster is a digital instrument cluster but the graphics of it i mean Probably a Samsung phone from 2015-2016 has better graphics than that. Uh, and the third thing, and it's a very very annoying thing, and I'm hoping that this that it's a problem only with this car. It makes this weird creaking sound when you're driving, and it's coming from the sunroof area, and it does not stop. It is too irritating, and I hope that this is a problem only with this car. The back seats of the Countryman are nothing very eventful. They're very practical, very comfortable to sit on. I would say the cushioning is a little bit on the harder side, but uh, in general, I think the Countryman has good amount of leg space. I mean, this is my driving position. I'm 5'8 and I have loads of knee room. I have a good amount of space underneath the seat to rest my legs and yeah, for me at least, the headroom is no problem at all. And the best part about the Countryman is that the cabin feels very spacious and very airy because it has lots of windows and uh, lots of uh, places for light to come in from. For example, you have this split panoramic sunroof, so you can open this as well and uh, I have loads of light coming in from here. The back windows are pretty big and you have these rear windows over here which let in a lot of light. So at no point in a journey you're going to feel any sort of claustrophobia. Apart from that storage space is pretty decent at the back. You have some good amount of storage in the door card over here. You have some place over here to keep whatever you want, your phone, your iPad or whatever. And you have two type C ports over here to charge your phone. Pretty practical. I have a center armrest 
come out i have a center armrest as well cup holders over here if you want to drink anything yeah so i would say pretty practical back seats very comfortable i don't have any complaints thumbs up so what is my final conclusion on the mini countryman well in my opinion this is a very interesting and very quirky car in the segment and it gives you an experience like no other compared to the bmw x1 which is basically its sibling this is way more interesting to drive and way more interesting to look at as well and when it comes to the interior the bmw is very serious very straightforward this has a lot of nice touches here and there and keeps you entertained all of the time so if you're looking for a crossover or an SUV in this segment that has a lot of interesting things in it and is like no other SUV in that segment, I would say the Mini Cooper Countryman should be at the top of your list.